All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight we're going to be talking about a machine that was sent out to me to test. And some of you may be familiar with it. It is the Laser Pecker LP5. Uh, recently, I tested out the LP4. It's a, the, the predecessor to this machine, but this machine packs a little more punch, being this a 20 watt fiber and a 20 watt 455 or blue laser. So the materials that you can do with this machine is going to be pretty awesome. So with the laser pecker machines, the thing that you'll notice guys is they're very, very portable. Uh, this is the LP4 that I just recently tried out and this is the LP5. Now, I will tell you the LP5 has put on a little weight compared to its little brother, but all together, it's still highly, highly portable. So let's go over some of the things about the machine. So first off, as far as assembly goes, literally five minutes and I guess maybe four four to six screws, depending on how you want to count it. All right, when you get it out of the box, you've got to attach this bottom plate to this little stand. And there's four screws here that does that. And then you have a couple of thumb screws that connect from here to connect the head and the stand together. And that's pretty much it. You're done at that point. Now, all of your connections are gonna be right here on the back. Uh, that's for power, USB, all the attachments, everything. They're all right there. Uh, this is to raise the machine up and down for focus. Uh, you've got a pause button here, which also doubles as the power. So if you hold that down for like three to five seconds, it'll power it down. Uh, and also same thing to power it up. Then you've got an e-stop button there, uh, which will stop the laser from firing, as well as the other little button right there. That is the uh, one that turns on the pointing lasers for the framing. On the other side, one thing that I do like is this cover, the older one, would kind of get in the way. There really wasn't anything you could do with it. They did fix this one where it snaps in and out, and that makes it a lot easier when you're doing items. And it's a lot easier to just, just to deal with in general. And they also have an enclosure, which I'm supposed to be getting, but I don't have it yet, that will make it even more user-friendly. So it's gonna, it is gonna eat away from some of the portability, but having the enclosure with the door it would be convenient for, you know, when you're using it in your fixed location. All right, so now let's talk about some of the things that the machine can do and where I think it falls as far as the list of uh, engravers that you might want for whatever purpose. So as far as cutting goes, can this machine cut? Yes, it, it can. Up reasonably thick material. Uh, the thickest material that I cut was probably about five millimeters thick. It does come with this little cutting plate right here that is kind of like a honeycomb for this machine. Uh, I will say you can cut black acrylic relatively easy. Uh, does a good job on that. And I've also cut some uh, black walnut, some oak, and some other plywoods as well uh, using the machine and a little cutting surface. So, of course, I started off with wood with the machine and I wanted to just use some regular old plywood. So I've got some plywood that I picked up this week and this is some 4.7 millimeter uh, pre-finished plywood that I've been testing. And I used a piece of it and actually was able to cut it out and engrave it using the LP5. So I've done a really good job with that. All right. So moving on up, I decided, you know what, let's try a little oak. So I did about a four millimeter thick piece of oak. Uh, same thing, Burma logo, cut it out. You will notice that it does get a little sooty uh, at times because you don't have an air assist and I didn't all I did with these is just wipe them off and lay them to the side so you know you could spend a little time sanding and cleaning that up get a little better look all right some black walnut I uh, had a piece of that as I showed you uh, same thing this is probably about five millimeters maybe six it's at least five millimeters thick black walnut done a good job on it nice smooth edges now the edges will be tapered because of the way that the galvo works but it makes for a cool interesting looking little coin so then i moved over to acrylics because i think that this machine could have uh you know uh, acrylics as one of those things that would be good for especially if you're making you know earrings and stuff like that with thin uh, woods and thin acrylics uh, this machine is definitely capable to do that as well as it has real fine detail for the engraving. So 
took a piece of uh, black acrylic using the 455 nanometers and that's what you get. Uh, the engraving basically just kind of scratches it, but on the back, I went ahead and flipped it over and did a little bit of uh, engraving with the 1064 the fiber on the back just to show you that even this piece of material can change color. But while I was at it, I did one with the IR on some black acrylic also. Uh, this is, like I said, I, I engraved it and cut it out with the machine and there's the uh, settings that I used to do it. So if you have one of these, you wanna try it with some black acrylic, depending on your acrylic, because not all acrylics are identical, uh, you should be able to get some pretty decent results somewhere in that ballpark. It's anodized aluminum, these things, I tell you, they're pretty awesome. You can do images, you can do all sorts of things with this stuff. It's easy to keep up with, easy to store, uh, and there's very little risk of fire when dealing with it. So, did a couple power and speed tests with this stuff just to get them some settings, and uh, decided I wanted to try my luck with images because from my dealings with the LP4, I noticed that images is something that the laser packers seem to do pretty well at. So, did this image right here. Uh, this is just a stock image that I downloaded off the internet for the last supper and uh, come out pretty well. All I did was invert the image and just adjusted it ever so slightly in the software. Uh, there is the Venom image that I use for a lot of my, my testing on black anodized material. And you can see it turned out really nice as well. So once I found all the appropriate settings, I did put me a, a business card up there. And this is a black uh, business card that just black anodized business card and i got that guy and engraved it using basically the same settings i did on the other one just shrank the image down and turned out really really nice so there's that but as far as stainless steel guys uh, i went ahead and ran a piece of stainless to try to determine what colors and shading we could get now i wasn't trying to go for the blues and the you know the off colors. I just wanted to go straight up engraving what colors can we get. And as you can see, you can get the, the light color all the way like the gold the, to the brown all the way up to almost black there in the bottom. And this is without any kind of marking spray or anything like that. Uh, just using the machine to uh, mark the stainless steel material. And of course, always a little bit of a coin action on the on the Laser Pecker 5 as well. Uh, this is a brass coin that they sent with the machine. And I did put it in one of my little plastic cases that I had, uh, but I did the badge on it. Did a pretty good job. Not sure what I'm gonna put on this side yet. <laughs> so this is more or less just a work in progress. Uh, I do wanna do some of the really cool layered coins, but I just haven't had the time to sit down and play with the settings and dial that in right. Uh, and that's one of those things that does take a lot of work. It's very labor intensive. It's not something I would see being able to do for, you know, to make a living with this machine, but it is pretty, something pretty interesting and cool if you had the time to sit down and figure it out, which I haven't had so far. But basswood and uh, Baltic birch is some of the woods that people, you know, are always asking me about. This is a piece of uh, Baltic birch, really thin piece. And uh, as you can see, down in the bottom power range is probably a little hot. You gotta keep an eye on your materials uh, because you can, <laughs> you can actually start a fire or almost start a fire doing power speed tests. So this is some other birch that I did. And as you can see, it was really hot down at the bottom. Now I was watching the machine, so I stopped it when I realized that, hey, we're not gonna need to be running these last two. Uh, but all I needed was what I found out up here, which was my power and speed. And uh, that way I could go ahead and practice my engraving on this material. So always, always keep an eye on your machine. Uh, and I decided to go ahead and play around with this little cork coaster they sent. Uh, did a power speed test on it, determined the uh, speed that I needed, and burned my logo to the back of it. So it turned out pretty well. So material-wise, guys, with the 455 and the 1064, pretty much any organic material you're going to be able to, to get with the 455. And then when you get over into like the metals, uh, you can either mark different metals with the 1064 or like with the acrylics, you can actually get a different type of marking on the acrylics with the 1064 as opposed to the 455. So that's what makes it pretty handy. Uh, this, I believe I went ahead and ran the same test on this one as I did on the steel. So this is probably using the uh, 
IR 1064 nanometers and so just did a little quick test on slate slate's one of those things that blue 1064 it doesn't matter it, it'll engrave and you can get good results with it now this was not finished or prepped in any manner i just simply threw it on there and burned it so there we have it all right so a lot of you guys have been asking me what i thought about the lp5 and as you know there's been a trend lately with a lot of laser manufacturers they want these portable machines that have the 1064 capabilities but they want them portable to where you can take them places for like events and stuff like that. And I am an advocate of that. But I will say some of the machines, they keep getting more powerful and more powerful and they lose a lot of their portability. With this machine, even though they did step up the power output of this machine compared to the LP4, I think they retained the majority of its portability. And I do think too that upgrading the cone and adding this little removable cone right here was a really good idea for, you know, if you wanted to take it to, a, to an event and use it. I think that makes it a lot handier. So I will say also, they did send me out the air purifier to test, guys. And it's got this cool, let me get this over here where you can see it. The air purifier does have this cool little adapter that come with it that e e easily snaps onto the back of the machine and it to where you can vent it. And I do like that opposed to the LP4, the way the LP4 was set up. Uh, and they actually sent me two of these hoses with the uh, air purifier and one with the machine. So I've got enough hose to really put some length on this guy if I wanted to. And you can see right here, uh, it is quite lengthy. And so far the uh, air purifier has worked you can still smell the acrylic but considering that I've been doing wood acrylic and everything else in it uh, the smell wasn't terrible but you can see it has gotten dirty in today's since I've been using it today I've only had the air purifier for a day or so so it hasn't been put through the paces quite as much as the machine has but I'm gonna work with it a little bit more and uh, get back with you guys and let you know how, what I think about that thing all right guys, so at the end of the day, the machine is still portable. I still think that this is a decent candidate to take out to an event. If you had this machine in your shop, uh, it would be one of those that I would think that it would be relatively easy with one hand to pick it up and take it with you to an event. Uh, not a lot of calibration that has to be done, not, not a lot of moving parts other than where it slides up and down on the, uh, on the little pole there on the mount. Cabling is relatively simple. Uh, it does have the option of getting the air purifier with it for events and stuff. This air purifier is almost like a little six pack cooler. I mean, it's really small, has this big handle on the top. So it would be pretty easy to carry. So they, I think they've went at this machine trying to maintain as much of the portability as they could and giving it the, the higher output that they have. And I think they've done a pretty good job of that. So, all right guys, so there you have it. Portable yet powerful. It does work, does a good job. Uh, the software, I'm still, still learning it, but so far, so good. Especially with the images, it seems to do a really nice job of that. So if you're interested in the machine, we'll go check out the specs, guys. Click the link down below and go check that out. And uh, we'll be trying to come up with some more ideas for some content with the machine. But until next time, be safe and have a good day.